Today on the Skid Factory, we're testing the strengths of that unknown chain, this thing I made, and that 1978 forklift. As you can probably see, we've um, been hard at it. Uh, we've stripped off stuff off the engine we didn't need or is going to be moved, like the exhaust manifold and the cooling thing on the side, bottom outlet the and cooling tensioner. Thing. Um, that's got to be replaced. They don't fit in a patrol. And then we took off the flywheel housing, which on the, in this case was a Dodge Ram flywheel housing. Uh, these engines are fitted to a gazillions of different different things. Not even that's not even that's actually a number. They are fitted to everything. You name it. Um, the automotive versions are like a tiny portion of what these engines can be fitted to. So they're built with a removable, or you built you make your own flywheel housing. It could be anything. So in this case, we've removed the Dodge setup, um, and this is a Turbo 400 GM. 4L80 adapter, which was supplied by Pete at Hughes Performance. Uh, so that adapts to the 4L80 box. We're also supplied by Hughes. It's got a um, billet flywheel, like flex plate, that's about five times thicker than the, the Dodge setup. Uh, so next along the line, we got to adapting the patrol transfer to the 4L80. Um, this is a uh, CEM adapter plate from Victoria, Custom Engineering and Mechanical. Two-piece design, not sure why, probably something to do with CNC things. Bolts up pretty well, it's, it's actually pretty accurate. The problem that we had is it's, it seems in hindsight that it's designed for a two-wheel drive box and this is actually a four-wheel drive box. Um, so we had to cut stuff off. <laughs> um, it worked out all right, but um, this is part of the uh, output shaft, uh, I think it was about 130 mil long output shaft. And um, so we cut off the desired amount that would allow the, the transfer to bolt up. And it still didn't because there's differences inside. The rear of the case is different. Um, it's actually sealed off there instead of at the end of the extension housing. And it's got uh, a few different things. So this is part of the the what you call it, the gear, the gear and bearing assembly and the start of the transfer case. That's the modified bit, or the end of it anyway, that's been re-splined by um, CEM. So we just had to remove that as well. Um, we've still got 45 mil of spline engagement, which is plenty. So it's all good. Just something to keep, be aware of. Um, you need to get all the details. If you're going to buy this off that guy and that off that guy and that off that guy, um, be aware that it may not be a, a complete match because there's no such thing as a kit. Well, there is such a thing as a kit, but not one that actually all fits together. Are you using so, those air quotes correctly? I don't, I don't know if there's a way to use them correctly. This is an easy... Don't expect everything to bolt up unless you buy everything from one guy and it's all bolted together already, then you might have a chance. Um, we've went through the same thing with the Duramax Patrol and pretty much every other thing that, that is assumed works, it don't assume, it quite often doesn't. So you can do all the research in the world, but at the end of the day, when you get to this stage is when you're gonna find out what's gonna happen. Let's put it in the the chassis. No, Hughes, 4L80E, you, oh, got, yeah. a, you got a list. Oh, this giant black gearbox here is a 4L80E, so um, trucks in America, so like you probably stuff like 3500, eight lugs would have this transmission behind a, probably a six litre, uh, going right back to 454s and um, 8.1s, that sort of stuff, the big heavy duty stuff has this box in it. This is the one that doesn't break. It's not a 4L60E. The 20 makes a big difference. However, when you put it in front of a Cummins, which is a um, potentially incredibly torquey and powerful engine, 
it does need to be uh, rebuilt with extra bits. There's a lot of extra bits in it and there's no one in the world that I'm going to be able to store or understand what they are, so I'm going to read it from Pete's message from Hughes. It's got a 300M billet nitrided treated steel input shaft. 4140 forged nitride treated steel forward clutch hub. 34 element intermediate sprag, heavy duty low roller clutch, heavy duty overrun roller clutch, a blueprinted front oil pump, high temp HT, HD molded silicon clutch apply pistons. So yeah, these things got a, like a, a weird sort of silicon pad that sort of does things in there. It's a bit strange. Um, that was an excellent description. Uh, Ray Bestos blue friction plates, choline steel plates, Kevlar wide intermediate band, I should be wearing glasses, with reinforced band lugs, carbon high static rear band, a blue tr blueprinted valve body, so blueprinted basically means they, they machine the valve body flat again because it, they're just a, a, um, a sheer fit, same as the oil pumps, there's no gasket or anything in, in a lot of the parts of it where the separator plate and stuff is, so if, the, if there's warpage with age, it just leaks out fluid that you need to get, be going to places, so they, that's what the blueprinting is. Um, all fresh electronic components from GM. New wiring harness. Of course, it's got the uh, compu shift to go with it, but there's an internal wiring harness as well. Case connector reinforcement bracket. I don't know what that is. Um, Fresh bushes, Durabond dry film coated, uh, heavy duty roller thrust bearings, and a massive cast alloy sump. So, so what you're saying it's is not a standard gearbox. <laughs> um, this isn't the biggest one they do um, because I, I'm really, I'm, not, I'm probably a bit different to every other dude that wants to put a Cummins in their car is that you don't need to make a patrol into a drag race car because it's not. So. If you want to drag race your patrol as well as sand dune jump it, you probably need to get a, a, a different one to this particular build. There's much more that you can do with them to strengthen them. Um, converter strength, all sorts of stuff. So uh, I'm coming at this from the point of view is you're just putting an engine in that's going to be reliable and powerful and torquey, not one that you can do 10 second quarters in because that doesn't make any sense to me, but you know. We should take this down the quarter mile. We're not the normal internet here. Yeah? Maybe? Oh, yeah. yeah. Might as well. But still not a drag car. Mm. Can we put it in now? Okay, well, now we can. There's a lot of auto stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. Yep, well, that won't get to, the, to here and there if you don't have that, so... So a good explanation. Science. Science. Al's forklift is a 1978 Komatsu powered by an Isuzu diesel four-cylinder. The combined weight and height of the engine makes it difficult to manoeuvre an engine crane, hence why the forklift is being used. That, and Al just likes using his new toy. Gotta go that way. Got to cut those humps out of the cross member. Removing the humps from the cross member allows the engine to sit lower and provides a clean sheet to start with when it comes to fabricating a gearbox mount. We've been going back and forwards with the engine, just moving it around, trying to figure out where everything goes. Um, yeah, it's great to work on the car without the body on, but the the downside is you don't know where the body is in relation to the engine, so... Um, Isn't that what those reference marks are for, though? Yeah, that's, that's to help, but it's not... It can't tell you everything. 
So we just have to bite the bullet and put it where we think it's got to go and then um, tack it together and put the chassis back underneath the body. Um, the problem with this sort of setup is you can't just chock the engine up on a cross member or anything like that like we would do with a, a normal car. There's nothing there. So we don't really have much choice but to position this thing where we think it goes and then, and then just put four good tacks on it and um, hope that we don't have to cut them off. But once it's up there and we put it back underneath, we will, that will give us the opportunity to find out where we've gone wrong and take some measurements and then work from there. And hopefully it won't have to do it more than once. But that's the joys of working on Forbes. There is no joy. That's not going anywhere. <laughs> Maybe. With the engine mounts tacked, we're ready to refit the body to check if the engine is in a suitable location. Our mate Ollie was around, so we put him to work. It's nearly Instagram finished. filming me again. Yeah. It's like a career. I, I like it how you're smiling. <clears throat> best part about it. I tell you what, I got a sore back. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm carrying around all my bullshit. Mm. Stupid heavy engines. How good is it that I mean we, we lifted the body up a few times. I'm just glad that we painted it red so you could tell it was in there. Well Rich painted it red. I think it was Stefan. Is that why it's got runs? <laughs> is, is Stefan the Woody of the Boss Garage? Yeah. No way. I'm way better than no, Stefan. Well, what's Aaron it? is the Woody. Uh, yeah. Aaron. Without Aaron, there would be no De Boss, and without Woody, there'd be no Skid Factory. True. I'm talking character, though. I'm like Stefan and Aaron built into one. Yeah, pretty much. But way better looking. Is that why you're so girthy? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, where were we? <laughs> that gonna, was a digression. You're going to talk about how... <laughs> Word the, for the day is digression. You're going to talk about how the Cummins is mounted. So, yeah, these Cummins, they fit really easy. Basically just slaughter in and... Zot some stuff on and it's done. You just need a hammer mm -hmm. for the firewall. Yep. That um, worked out pretty well. Speaking though. of words of the day, patrol fire, firewalls are very malleable in that center section there. Yeah. Done this before on the Duramax patrol for the exhaust clearance. You can pretty much get about 25 mil out of them just with some gentle, you know. Persuasion. Persuasion. 
sometimes less gentle, but there's nothing behind there, so it doesn't matter, so you can just bash away. So our main problem was just one injector line. So what happens if you need to replace that? It's a bit pokey. That? If you need to replace the, the injector line, um, do you sell the car? You just gotta take the body off. You either sell the car, take the body off, or get the Hoff to drill an inspection port <laughs> in it, which is doable. But it's a common, so you should never have to do anything with it. That's what I heard. So, where are we at with, what else we have to do? We have to cut off a bit of stuff off the gearbox, because there's a big ear there's on the a, side of it. There's a big ear for, I don't know, must be for machining process or something that doesn't need to be there. You do that with T56s and stuff. Yeah, too. they've got them all over them as well. But yeah, it tried to gouge a hole in the tunnel, as they do. Same as T56s, so we just chopped that off. Otherwise, yeah, it was just a little bit of massaging. Um, it's pretty high too. We're, we're kind of flying blind because we've never done it before. And the same, you just, it's not like in a car where you've got a cross member and you sort of like, oh, I just get it near the cross member as close as I can or cut the cross member to pieces if it's a Trana. There's nothing there. So you kind of, it's hard, there's no real reference points for anything. This engine's massive, so you need to get it back as far as you can because you need space for a radiator and fans, that sort of thing. You've got a diff and a drag link and a steering arm and a panard rod all banging up and down underneath it um, that needs space because it's a four-wheel drive and it needs articulation. So we've kind of just reverted to lift it up out of the way as much as we can and um, keep the driveline angle correct. I've measured a heap of driveline angles in these patrols and they do vary a bit, a couple of degrees. TD42s are like a water slide, they're like seven degrees or something down. Um, and you can see that just by staring at them. They're this ridiculous. looks pretty even, it's got a bit of rake on it there too. Yeah, so the, the ZD was five degrees. You can't really tell so much on a four cylinder that's got crap all over it because it's it's covered in shit and you can't really tell what the what the angle are, but when you've got that big long TD42 like boiling away there, you can sort of, through the coolant mist, you can see the angle. So it's it's pretty obvious. So they, they do run a big, a steep angle on the, on the engines. Um, this is running about six degrees, I think. Um, so we could put it in many different places, but basically you just got to work it out yourself or take it somewhere else. I think the main motivation is, I know I don't want to cut those mounts off and re-weld it in another spot. I know you don't want to do that either, so. I want space up the front because I know it's important, yeah. so, yeah. Who's, who turned the water on? Bracket. So yeah. what do we do now then? Uh, so the body's just sitting there, so it's coming back off. Um, we will uh, finish weld, so there's heaps of welding to do, it's plug welding uh, and perimeter as well, so there's lots to do there. We've got to make the uh, transmission mount, that's um, just, it's just basically resting on the, on the cross member, we've got to plate the cross member back in. So there's a bit to do, so the body's just, this is just our basically our test fit to make sure that we have them in the right place and we can move on from here. So, um, it looks alright. Cool. Um, I think we did speculate about the GU4. So this is, there's one to three, and the four has got the sort of square guards on it. Um, I have been told that they are longer. Do they all come with that ding, or is that just No, this that's one? optional. Okay. Um, you can... If you want to order one, I've got one in stock. We'll swap you for a straight one. Um, they are maybe something to do with TB48s. So I'm not too sure. The 48, well, they, they had them in GU3s as well, so I don't really know. But the, G, the TB48 is a double overhead cam six cylinder petrol engine. So the back of the cylinder head, the, the old ones were just a push rod engine. So they were pretty compact in the head area. So then they changed it to this basically skipped 
15 years of technology and changed it to a double overhead cam, variable valve timing sort of thing. So the head was much larger and I think they pushed the engine forward a bit. Well, are and you talking about this chassis thing here? Yeah, so there's that and I suspect that the, the whole front is a bit longer, but I don't know. And there's probably someone who's got a couple lying around could throw a tape measure across it and tell us pretty quick. But um, the young fella down the road, Jackson, who's done his um, 12 valve Cummins, he had to cut a big slot out of that um, to fit the crank pulley, which is nowhere near ours. So it's kind of hard to, it is difficult to tell. And that's one of the challenges you're gonna come up with, particularly if you're putting a different tra transmission in it. Cause if it's a, a um, if you're just using the manual trans, it's going to stay where it is and you just basically connect the um, Cummins to it and it is what it is. Get your angle right, weld the mounts on. It's a much easier job and probably the best idea. But we'll, we'll go back to that once we finish this job to see how much of a Tirana it is, or whether it's more Bedford Tirana or see how close it is. Judging by the smile on your face, it's definitely nothing. It's like yeah. It's so far so good. No cross members to cut up. No. Where's the well, fire? Only the gearbox. Oh, the, yeah. Gearbox cross member. Wait, did I film that? Yeah. Yeah, I did. We're using the humps that we cut off as wheel chocks. They work really they actually well. Actually work. Well, what'd you do with it? Yeah, there it is. There. That's called upcycling. It, that, it works well because when you reverse, it like digs into the concrete. Yeah. Thanks for explaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now what? This this isn't the end of an episode. No, we got can, heaps to well, do. We're, this is it's long. But I thought you were letting me off. No, you can give me a lemon squash and then we'll weld some stuff and then we'll end it. How you, about that? You're closer to the fridge. See ya. Bye. Bye, Felicia. Yeah, bro. Kicking off a new day in the shed, the engine is being removed, hopefully for the last time, to weld the engine mounts to the chassis. After being blasted with the MIG, any bare metal is given a coat of black cold gal to prevent any corrosion. Is that enough runs? Yeah, plenty.
Trucks of wood are temporarily used to support the transmission on the crossmember. Our state-of-the-art aligning marks are then matched up and once again we're ready to refit the body. The hoist arms are then moved from the body and back onto the chassis to lift the car back in the air so a few body mounts can be tightened to keep it in position. The transmission mount supplied isn't going to work in our application, so it's upcycled to make a new one. Al is using some 40 nominal bore pipe with the original CEM bush and some boxed steel to fabricate a new mount. Al double checks the position of the gearbox before final welding. Paint on it, that's too thick. We've got a bit of a ride height difference now, as you can see. It's, it's oh, sitting on the hoist. It's basically, uh, it's compressed. But it's got to have bull bars and intercoolers and radios and everything put on it yet, so it will drop a bit. What, 10 mil? Yeah, maybe. It's a two inch lift. So everything's fitted up quite well. Um, as you probably saw, we did panel beat the firewall a bit, but um, that's the thing. I've done it before when I did the Duramax. Um, we did it to clear the exhaust on the Duramax. It comes out the rear of the engine in the valley. And um, it's actually super malleable. Like you can, you can get like 30 mil out of it. I reckon you got more than that. Yeah, it's really, once you, once you knock down the, sort of bumps in it, it'll just sort of move away pretty easily, you don't have to beat the crap out of it too much, so uh, the engine's sitting well back, which is good, uh, as long as there's room. We chucked a turbo and manifold on there because that's what you do after you mount the engine, just so you can sort of stare at it lovingly. Does that fit under the bonnet? It looks pretty high. It does fit under the bonnet. Um, I just took off that scoop thing, but this scoop's going to get deleted anyway, You've got to sort of cap it off. It'll still be on the bonnet, but I'll just put a plate underneath it so, so um, nothing comes through. I'm thinking of putting the, moving the battery to the other side and putting the airbox here, just because the airbox is supposed to be on that side, but it just, you just end up with, it's a four inch intake. So it's, it's gonna be, there's a lot of pipes traveling from one side to the other. The exhaust has already got to go on the other side. So from what I've seen, it ends up being a bit of a shit show, so um, this is a lot more work, um, but that's all right. If it's the right way to do it, then that's what we'll do. I've um, just been chatting with a mate that um, makes air boxes for Land Cruisers and stuff like that, so we're going to see if we can get some bits and pieces off him, maybe 
sort of make our own out of his um, sort of water cut bits or he'll make us one, whichever. Um, have to move some stuff here to get out of the way, some fuse boxes and stuff, but that's all right. And then punch a big hole. What's but anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. There's a lot more to do yet. What's happening next week, do you know? We'll have to pull the body back off again. It's only just sort of half bolted on. And um, we'll re-seal that firewall area with some um, like noise slash heat stuff. Cover up all the dings we put in it. Woody put in it. You put them in there. No. I didn't use the back of the hammer. You used the ball. Well, I was using the good hammer. You were using the crap hammer. You were using the ball end, so it's got all bold dings in it. Yeah, I mean, that smoothed it out. No, it's moving. It, it really didn't. It did. Anyway. So, we're happy. Everything went pretty well. Fits. You wouldn't think it'd fit when you looked at it on the ground. But it does. It's got a big turbo on it. It's bound to make rattly noises, so all good. And it's resplendent. You happy? I'm happy. Cool. Are you happy? Yep. I'm happy if you're happy. I'm going to get on to old cock and start working out a radiator for it. Probably get a copper cord radiator and modify it. Modify the outlets. TB48 one? Uh, TB48 is the narrow, long, upright one, so oh, yeah. uh, just to... It would probably be... TB45 copper, that's what I used in the Duramax and had no issues with it. So um, they are expensive, but copper doesn't rot away when it gets stray current. <laughs> so we'll get into that next week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then. Thanks, Alan. Bye. Woody bought some KY and we're ready to slip this sucker in. You look so different without a beard, eh? No shit. When was the last time you didn't have a beard on the shot? I don't remember. Might have been like super gramps. Last time I, McGinn accidentally cut off my beard. <laughs> hey, Nickers. Do you want to give me an outtake for the people? Don't buy cheap motorbikes. Don't buy cheap motorbikes. Zoom out on both. It's Nickers' dog. His yeah. name is Woody. His name is Woody. You gotta get this and then pull back, and then we gotta get one of your hair and then pull back. Can you just put your head next to it? Ziggy! Look! They're matching, bro! Black dog. Grey black, dog. Black and grey dog. You got Mega Zoom on, haven't you? Mm. Also, the tag's hanging out of your hat every time you wear a hat. It's because I didn't cut it off. There you go. Bits. It's hanging out more. <laughs> Bro. Why are you so picky?